I will share my screen with you. Okay, uh, let me know when you can see me. Just give me a second. Open the system preferences. Just bear with me, please. That would be a little card for them. Just a little bit speed, not read. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I will start from explaining the basic interface, some options on how RPEG works, and uh, anytime that you have a question, please stop me and ask me. Anytime that you basically need me to slow down or to explain something further, please let me know and I will adjust, okay? Okay, sure, yeah. Um, so when you log into RPEG, this is the first thing that you will see. This is basically the home screen on the home screen you have various widgets each one of them is a different report or option so the idea is that you will customize the home page so it will show the options and reports that are most useful for you so you can always go to the widgets and you can choose which ones of them will show up on the home screen uh, so uh, basically, the other thing that uh, you need to pay attention to here uh, is the news uh, button. The news button is actually our development team's Twitter account. They are implementing new changes on a weekly basis, and every time that the change is implemented, is it's available for all of our users free of charge. So if it's something that is useful for you, you can just take advantage of it. Uh, sure. The other thing is that you also have our support. Uh, you can book a call with us like you did now, share the screen, we can help you through uh, issues, options, or questions that you might be having. Uh, also, uh, mostly used is the chat widget here in the down left screen. So you can always chat with our agents live. You can always ask us questions, and you will see even when you open a trial that our uh, support team is very responsive. So basically, you will get the response immediately or in a few seconds. Uh, you can count on that support uh, as well. And sure. the yeah, so the third support channel is that you can send us always an email at support at .com, And this is very useful when we are out of our working hours because we always have somebody who is looking at the emails and if it's something urgent, you will get an urgent response. Okay. All right. Uh, when it comes to the trial, you can open a free trial from our web page, uh, .com, and yeah, the trial cool. yeah, lasts for 15 days. It's completely free of charge and no credit card info required. Uh, when it comes uh, to... Sales, please. Yeah? Yes? Yeah, can you please go to sales, please? Yes, of course. Yeah, do the same invoice, please. Uh, the invoice. Okay, so we will go to the sales order. Uh, uh, when you take a look at the sales order list, it's very report oriented. You have all of the various columns and statuses. Um, you can always filter through them, group them, subgroup them, export them to XLS. Uh, so, for example, in the quantity status, you have to check which ones of the orders have available quantity. In this case, we have this one, for example. It shows that has available quantity, so then we can move forward and pack the item in the moment that you are actually packing that that's when you are removing it from the stock so your stock is now decreased by uh, one uh, item of the raw material no, no, number. Now no, 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 I just want to see how do you make uh, the, the new sales invoice? Okay so you would start from here so this is the sales order list you would click on create you would choose a customer from your customer database so let's say it's this one then you will choose the product that you want to sell to the customer uh, let's say it's this one uh, if you have a selling price on the uh, basically item level it will show up here if you don't then you would just type it in and uh, save it the system will tell you whether you have the item in stock or not. It, can you can you uh, add items by by what do you call uh, by bulk? Let's say I want to add ten items. Uh, here. Yeah. In the order. Yeah. Uh, well, it depends. Uh, if you are selling them as a kit, so if it's an assembly of items, then you will be able to add them in a bulk. Or if it's a bill of materials, if it's something that you are manufacturing, then you can add them in a bulk as well. Can you show me if you want to add as a bulk? How do you, how do I do that? Uh, 
Yes, of course. So first you have to have it as a bulk. You have to have it set up, uh, for example, as a kit. So yeah. let me just choose some items. Let me see which ones I have in stock. Mm -mm -mm, this one. This one. This one. Okay, for example, those three. We will call this test. Hey, hey, just, just, just add a few more, please. I mean, maybe a few more. Okay. Not a yeah. problem. Let me see which ones I do have in stock. This one. How do you know? It's a, how do you know that? Can you see the stock there? Uh, yes, you can, but uh, you have to basically I can see it from the products and services list. And in this case, you will have to save it first and then you will see here the on hand column. So, okay, for example, I was wrong about this one, uh, so yeah. I, I will change it. Yeah. For example, like this. But when you take a look at no, the wait, products wait, wait, and services wait, wait, list, wait, wait, you wait, wait. have. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, just, just, just stay there, stay there. Okay. So this means I can see on hand how much uh, this is, how much. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Please uh, save this as a test. Yeah. Okay. It's safe. Now we would go at create sales order. And now it's all added here. And uh, once you save it, whoops, sorry, missing the price. Let's say it's five thousand uh, dollars. Once you save it, you will have all of the items listed, and uh, basically, once you pack it, no, 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 the document. No, uh, not, not this way. Sorry, can you just uh, go to the main uh, sales order, please? Okay, I'm here. Uh, the, the new sales order, yeah. Okay. Uh, Let's create. Choose a customer. Okay, so so you can uh, trigger uh, the test now from here. Yes. Okay. Now in, in this uh, let's say let, wait, wait, wait. in this kit, let's say if we want to add uh, or remove one, is it possible? Uh, add or remove one. one. Yeah, in the kit. Product, uh, yeah. Yes, but you will have to go to the kit level, and then edit it here. So you, so you can't uh, bring kit and uh, do edit there, isn't it? You can edit it only only in the inventory. Uh, if you want to add products in a bulk, you cannot edit the kit on the order level. On the order level, okay, okay, all right, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me see what I was talking about. Uh, so uh, basically, yeah. So are you tracking your items by using serial or lot numbers? No, 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 no. No, nothing. No. Okay. Uh, so uh, in the manufacturing. No, I, I, I tell you, it's very simple. I was say, see, our thing is uh, very uh, one, just one step, uh, one step manufacturing process. Okay. So we okay. basically we purchase the products, okay, and we sell the products. And we have a BOM, and we, we are, now anyway. I think we are comfortable with uh, zero. So maybe you can just uh, tell me uh, more uh, since we have a short time. You know, we want to see what how does it integrate with zero. Okay, uh, so the zero integration works uh, one way. So it's from ERPAC to zero. Uh, and the idea is that you will make all of the documents in ERPAC. You will invoice them from ERPAC. And once you invoice them, you will be able to send them to zero. So now this document is invoiced. And when I go to the accounting synchronization list, the document will appear on the list. And you mm -hmm. will be able either to send it to zero or to ignore it and not send it. So it will disappear from the list. So so it's up to you to choose which documents you will send out. Mm -hmm. And once you send them out to zero, it has to be, as I said, a financial fact. So either a sales order invoice or a supplier invoice. And once you send them out to zero, you can take care of the accounting side of things. Okay. So basically, so it will be from uh, uh, ERP AG to zero, not zero to ERP AG, isn't it? Exactly. Exactly. Yes. The okay, idea is so that you would manage your inventory here and you will create your documents and do your invoicing in ERPAG and then from ERPAG you will send out the uh, invoice documents uh, to zero. Yeah. How do you uh, collect the... Uh, how is the sales collection? Uh, for the payments? Yeah. 
Okay, so we integrate with Stripe when it comes to payments. So every time that you can email a document uh, to the customer directly from the system, you can uh, download it in PDF and then email it to the customer. You can print it out and give it to the customer. The thing is that the document has a payment link here. So the customer can just click on the payment link and issue a payment. Yeah, but for, for us, it's all cash payment. No? Okay, so if it's cash, you have two ways you can do this. The first way will be, again, uh, just when you click on, wait a second, this one is already paid. Let me choose the one that is not. Okay, so you have a payment button here. So you will click on the payment button, the amount you will choose on which of the bank accounts it's going to, and you will record the payment. So, so it'll be one by one, isn't it? Uh, you can do it in a bulk, so let me show you. Bulk action and record payment. Choose the bank account and that's it. Okay. That would be one way. The other way is if you are using, are you using maybe point of sale? No, no, no. No, okay. So then that that's it. That's uh, how you're recording payments just, in our bank. Uh, just uh, stick to that, okay, here, okay? So okay. How, uh, how do I know which has not been paid? Okay, so you have a payment status here. Yeah, okay, just so can you just can do not paid? Uh, yeah, so here it is. It's not, not invoice, it's not paid, no? Uh, yeah, well, if it's not invoice in the payment status, it means it's not paid even though yeah, it can be missed. What is invoice? Not not invoice meaning. Let me show you. And not on this one. Let me see. This one has available quantity. You see, so even though it's invoiced, the not invoiced means that your customer hasn't uh, processed the invoice yet. Because when uh, when they get an invoice, that means that they issue the payment. So it, it, this actually means that the invoice hasn't reached the customer yet in the sense that he hasn't paid the amount on the invoice. But you can change that one. So you can always go to the administration, localization. Just give me one second. Translation. Whoops. Not invoiced. Okay, this one. Uh, okay, so we will have to log out and then log back in. Sales, sales orders. Okay, so you see it says not paid now. So if you're not comfortable with the built in language, you can always change it. Okay, so if so can you just do a bulk payment of uh, three uh, not paid invoices? Yeah. So it will change as a paid, is it? Uh, yes, but if, if, I didn't remember the numbers. Let's try it again. So no, 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 just, 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 sorry, just choose uh, 130 and 131. Okay. That's for easy to remember, no? Okay, I agree. Report payment. And they are off the list now because we filtered to the not paid payment status. But now when I go to paid, uh, number. whoops, sales order. No, it's below. Yeah, it's the plan, plan by. I want to find it now. Now I'm stubborn. No, no, yeah. See here. I saw, yeah, anyway, planned by. No, it's not being stubborn. <laughs> it's uh, three, uh, four zeros, you know? No, we don't have that one. No, ma'am, just go back. 
Yeah, that's the yeah. Stop it. Go back. Go over. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. But there's something called wider. I think we choose just now two. Here they are. Okay. Okay, and what about this? Show me about the manufacturing, please. Yes. So from the manufacturing side of things, when a product is BOM based, you can of course create a bill material recorder for it. Uh, so you will just choose one from the list. As soon as you choose it, the blueprint will be populate the work operations and the input items straight away uh, based on the estimated cost for the work operations. So actually the labor cost and the cost of the input items, the system will give you the estimated cost. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're producing, uh, you have a fixed priority that is set up on the item level. So if you change the quantity, if you decide you're producing five instead of one, the system will recalculate all the quantities and the estimated cost, and it will give you the estimated cost for the entire production. Uh, if you're si uh, signing the work operations to your employees, you can assign them from here. So I can assign the assembling to Nolan Peterson, uh, reporting to myself, for example, uh, and I can save that one. Now, uh, if you're tracking employee time, you can either just type it in on the work order level, you can track it through the tablet or through the mobile app. So you can use the timesheets from here. Let's say this one. Oh, whoops, start. And then it will count the time that your employee is actually working. Also, when you go to the manufacturing timesheets, you can start the work orders from here. So here is the one for, from Nolan Peterson. So I can start counting time against it. Uh, and also, when you look at the timesheets list, you will see how many work operations you have assigned to each employee and how many hours they have to work and how many work operations they realize. So you will always be able to see their current effect or if they are currently in process. Uh, also, as soon as you complete, uh, go, go, go slow. Huh? Sorry, yeah. Whoops, sorry. Yeah, uh, as, yeah, yeah. as soon as you complete uh, the orders, whether it's on the mobile app or it's in the timesheets. So here is the timesheet for Nolan Peterson. As soon as you complete this, the time that's logged either in the timesheets or on the mobile app will be automatically logged into the work order in question. So now when I go back to the work order, I can see that I worked for one minute and Nolan Peterson worked for one minute. And based on that, the system will calculate the actual cost for the work operations. So when you are adding the work operations to the system, you you're adding the ones that are uh, in. Like I said, sorry, I, I, can I have your name, please? Sorry, how do you address you? Elena. Yeah, Elena. So I think just, just uh, we, we don't go for, uh, I think let, let's uh, go more into what we use. You know? So uh, can you just go to the manufacturing, please? Okay. We use, like I said, simple manufacturing of uh, using BOM. You know, just we, we, are, uh, we, are, we, we produce, we are food manufacturers, you know, okay? So when we, Manufacture, uh, let's say, so, so this is the place we, cre we create a BOM, am I right? Uh, yes, but actually this is uh, not the place you're creating a BOM. This is only the place where you're putting it in the production process. When you go to the inventory products and services and when you're adding a product, this is actually the moment where you're creating the BOM. So okay. let's say that this is our finished item. Yeah. And it's bill of material based. So as soon as we set the back ordering option to be bill of material based, we have this additional section. So this is actually where you will add the blueprint for your production process. So you can add components. In your case, you don't need uh, sub components because you are a single level uh, manufacturer. And uh, basically, let's say. OK, this one, uh, this is where you add the components. This is where you add the work operations. So if you are charging uh, for the labor and if that is included oh. in the cost oh. of. Mm. Excuse me? Yeah, no need, no need. We should just, just add the raw material, that's all. OK, only raw materials. OK, uh, let me okay. just remove these. We don't need them. Uh, let's add one more component. 
let's say it's race and this is the estimated cost for the components so this is the for, average purchase for, price for how many for how many uh, for uh, okay for one quantity okay okay so okay Okay, uh, so this is the estimated cost. So this is the stock price and the stock price is actually the average purchase price for the item. And mm -hmm. based on that, you will get the estimated cost for the entire production process. And now when we save it, this means that we actually have a blueprint. So from here, once you have this and you know how your item is called, you can create the work order. So you can either create it from here. Mm. You can create it from the manufacturing work order list so you can go here below materials and create it from here so here is my finished item so i can do that one or uh, if you're building to order then you can just when a customer orders the item so or let's say that we have a sales order and the customer orders our finished item from here you mm. see uh, one piece let's say it's a thousand dollars and save it uh, the system will, will tell us whether we have it in stock or not, and we, if we don't have it, we can generate a work order or a manufacturing project from here. So that will be the third way, and the fourth way will be to go to the manufacturing fulfillment and check the fulfillment list here, because here is where you will see the list of everything that you need to manufacture that the customer orders and you don't have in stock. So you can just create a work order from here. No, no, see, so let's see, I think you have, you have created one BOM, okay? Yes. So what we do is, uh, so every day we manufacture, okay? So every day we manufacture 10, 10 products, whether we have a sales or not, okay? So first we manufacture. So you, yeah, so you manufacture uh, for the stock, not for the order. No, not for the order, yeah, for stock. Okay, well then you don't, uh, we don't need the sales order. This is not an, an example for your workflow. Yeah. Let's just delete it. And uh, then, as I said, you can either create a work order from the product. So click on create and create a work order from here. Or you can just go to the work order list, create based on below materials. Uh, the difference is that the standard one is completely empty. So you will start from the scratch. But the below material one is the one that you already have the blueprint for. So you will just click there and you will choose the item that you want to manufacture from the drop down menu. And as soon as I choose it, the system will give me uh, yeah. the blueprint. Let, let, let's say I manufacture 100 items today. Uh, where do I put it? Here. So I just. Uh, 100, okay. 100 items and the system will recalculate. And the estimated cost will change. So, so when I just uh, save this one, so it is also saved from the raw material, am I right? From, yes, from the yes. inventory. Yes. Okay. So as soon as you save it, you will see uh, what you need and you will see how many uh, items you have. So in this case, we are missing one material here. We are missing the raw one. So you have to order it from your supplier. And uh, are you managing purchase orders? Do you want to manage purchase orders from Merpec as well? Yeah. Okay, uh, so if you are missing the raw material, then you can go to purchasing fulfillment and you can see everything that you need to order from your supplier. Here is our raw material number one. Uh, so you can create the purchase order from here. Mm. That would be one way. Uh, the other way would be creating it straight from the purchase order list. So going to the purchasing module, purchase orders, click on create and create the purchase order from here. Mm -hmm. So it's basically up to you how you're going to do it. Let's choose the raw material number one, the supplier, uh, and save it. Oops, I forgot the purchase price. Uh, and once we do this, then we will receive it to stock. And when we receive it, this means that our stock is actually enlarged by uh, the number of items required. But uh, let's this document, yes. Uh, and that's it. And now when we go back to the work order, I will just go back to manufacturing one piece because it's easier because we don't have everything in stock. So in this moment, we do have everything. Refresh and now we can manufacture what we need. So I will click on the load material 
I can load all of the material here. Pause the document. So this is actually deducting the material from the stock. The material loading will show you what you loaded. Quantity consumed as well. And then you deliver the finished good. And once you deliver the finished good, you're placing the finished item. Yeah. Excuse, yeah. excuse me? Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, and then you complete the work order. And now when we go to our finished item, we can see that we have one on hand. Okay, okay. And of course, even though you have the stock price, uh, which is the average price of manufacturing the item, you can always change the selling price. So you can uh, make price tiers if you want to give discount to a certain uh, customer category, or you can do volume discounts. So for example, if a customer buys 10 or five or 20 pieces of the item, then you will give them a more favorable selling price. So it doesn't have to be the same. And when I add the selling price here, so for example, my selling price is um, $1,200 and save it when you create a uh, sales order for the customer, uh, mm -hmm. the price, the selling price will be automatically uh, transferred there. Okay. So this is how we make the, okay, okay. All right. So this will affect the, the inventory every time, isn't it? Uh, yes, uh, so uh, when you manufacture the item, that will increase the inventory. When you sell the item, that will de decrease the inventory. Okay, and how does the accounting system work, please? Uh, the accounting system. Okay, uh, so since you're uh, basically integrating with zero, uh, I guess that uh, you will use the accounting from their side, but we do have an accounting module that has various reports, uh, such as balance sheets, income expenses and profit. You can always see your margin amounts. You can see the financial ledger report. Uh, also, you have a chart of accounts here and all of these accounts in the chart of accounts work automatically, but our uh, accounting system is pretty basic in the sense that it doesn't obliged to any country's regulation. So mm. since you operate worldwide, every country has its own specific regulations. And if you want to add those in our pack, uh, you will have to do it manually. So for instance, if you want to change the entries for from an automatic account, so from fixed assets, for example, to traveling costs, you will have to do it manually tr uh, through a manual journal voucher. So that is the one thing. The other thing that is very useful is that always in the sales report, you will be able to see, sorry, you will be able to see your margin. So here is your margin amount here. Here is what you make on each product line. So how much money left after you're finished with the production. So that is very useful. Also, when it comes to the customers and suppliers, you can always see who owes you and uh, to whom you need to deliver the products. And also when you open each customer, you can always go to the reports and see their financial ledger and whether they are in credit or in debit against you. So, and this customer has the balance of $1,434 uh, and that's how much they owe you. So you will be always able to see that one. Just, and, just uh, choose a customer, please. Excuse me? Uh, just go, go to the customer, please. Customers. Yeah. This is uh -huh, okay. This okay. is the customer list. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. So they owe you. Okay. Then uh, you can choose. Um, oh, excuse me. Just go back, please. They owe you. Okay. And can you just um, choose the third one? Okay. Yeah. So here, uh, how do I see how much they? Okay. This is how much they owe you. So this is only one one invoice or multiple invoices? Uh, this is multiple invoices. And when you open it, you will be able to see the list of invoices and uh, you will be able to see uh, the number of invoices from here. This is uh, everything they owe you basically added up. Mm -hmm, okay. So you can say, but can you just uh, search uh, this by date? Uh, this is actually by date, so it goes, the first one on the list is uh, the oldest uh, invoice and then it goes to the newer one, but you can always filter the date. So if I want to find a particular date, I can always filter it. Okay, so I don't have anything on the 5th, I don't no, have anything on the 6th, let me just choose filter. Okay. No, but can you just uh, choose between dates? Um, 
like group the date. Yeah. Okay, so we can always group by date. So this is by day. You can do it monthly, so you can go group date months. So you can see uh, this is now a monthly group. So this is for June. This is for July. Uh, you can do uh, whoops, sorry. You can do groups by cancel by quarterly, so by four months, and then uh, by years. So if I choose years, okay, so this one is first is 2017, then I have 2018 and 2019. So this is this is all the money, uh, is all the invoices been made or only the, uh, how much the money they owe? Uh, in the end of each, these are all the invoices, but in the end of each month, you will see how much they owe you, or by the end of the each year, you will see how much they owe you for that year. Okay, okay. 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 So just go back again to the finance model, please, accounting. Okay. Okay, then here you have, uh, how did you go to this one? Uh, I just... Uh, here is the accounting button on the left hand side of the screen. Okay, Just from here. Click on it. Okay, then from here, how do you go to the customer? Uh, okay, so it's sales, customers, and then you just click on the customer name and you open the customer profile. So, so, so it's not from accounting, from, from sales, isn't it? Uh, yes, yeah, so it's uh, from sales, but of course you can go to the accounting and if you want to see, for example, the financial ledger, you can see it from here. So this is by uh, customer. So this is my customer Dragon Bikes. This is okay. my customer ABC Metal Works. So you can go from the accounting as well. Okay, so can uh, for me, it, excuse me. I can go to sales, please. Yes. Okay, so from here, okay. And how about adding... Uh, Where's your customer database? Uh, how you would add? Okay, so you would go to the customer list and click on the add new. Uh -huh, okay. Name, email, address. You will add contact people, phone numbers, ship to addresses. You can okay. always attach any document if you have it. And you can map out your customer name. And this is also available in the app? Uh, you can import it, so you can go to the administration, uh, import customers, and you can import the info from no, no. here. No, what I'm saying is, uh, this your ERP is all, uh, also available as an app, mobile app. It, yes, it's uh, available as a mobile app and on the tablet. Okay. Uh, in mobile app, only uh, inventory or what about uh, sales? Uh, sales on the mobile app, no. Uh, yes, uh, you can sell through the mobile app, but only through the point of sale. But even in the point of sale, let me just show you. So uh, I will choose some products. So you will see the products here on the list. You can scan the barcodes. If you're using barcodes, you can scan the barcodes by using the mobile phone camera. Uh, you can type in the SKU of the products. You can find them that way, or you can just scroll through and choose which ones you want to sell. And when you click on the chart, you will see what the customer wants to buy, and you will see the to total amount. Now, when you click here, if you're selling to a particular customer you can always choose the customer from your database list and now let's say I'm choosing bike Inc um, and he will be the one who is purchasing everything and let's see it's just gathering the info why so slow uh, because my internet connection is not very stable I'm working on our database in the office and uh, there are multiple employees and we are all on the same database so that's why it uh, it's a little bit slower when it comes to the information. Yeah, uh, but the thing is that you will have uh, basically as soon as you are done with the mobile app, you will have the sales order on the sales order list here. Let me refresh this one and let me try with a new customer. Uh, point of sale. Uh, choose the item. Okay. okay, okay. Click on the customer. Oops, not the set quantity. Let's say Caprillo. Okay. 
um, yeah so uh, but the you can test this out on the trial you will see it's uh, much faster but as soon as it loads here you will get a sales order on the sales order list showing uh, that you made a sales order for that customer whether they paid you or not uh, mm -hmm. so you will see it on the sales order list fantastic okay okay sounds good and uh, uh, so I basically I can, I can uh, try this one uh, for 15 days isn't it Yes, of course. The 15 days are completely free of charge, so you can test it out and you can count on our support either through the trial, through the emails or by scheduling another call. Uh, so you can always basically communicate with us and we will provide you support. And once you're finished with this call, I will email you the video and I will email you. We have an instructions manual. Uh, we have an, a blog with instructions and uh, maybe you can go through those and uh, basically that's it <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how much how much does it cost for the for monthly cost i mean uh, yeah so the monthly cost for five users it's 79 dollars per month so for okay. for the total of five users and uh, just to mention is that uh, for the first month you have a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you purchase the license and you're not satisfied and you ask for a refund within the 30 days, we will, of course, return your money back. Um, and uh, also, if you decide uh, in a month or two uh, to maybe that Airpack suits you uh, very well and you want to make a long term commitment, then the annual license is $790 per month. So it's uh, basically two months free of charge. And also, the payments while you're on the monthly licenses are month to month. So we don't store any credit card information. So if you want to continue with the service, you will have to issue a payment in the end of every month. Okay, so um, so that's basically a something and for for using all the modules, am I right? Uh, it's for all of the modules. So everything that you see on the trial, you will get with each one of the licenses. Okay. All right, sounds good. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Elena. Let me just uh, uh, for for the next level, I just uh, download the app for fifteen days. Uh, let me just try for a week. And I'll, uh, I'll touch best with you guys in the chat forum. You know, how does it my, my, my feedback? Yes, thank you. Thank you for that. And I'm looking forward to hearing your impressions about yeah. the software. Yeah, yeah, one last one. So, for example, so to add, uh, so how do you add uh, products? Go to inventory and add, isn't it? Uh, yes. So, you would go to the inventory products and services and add new. So that's one way if you want to add them one by one. The other way is going to the administration, import products if you want to import them from XLS. So mm -hmm. both ways work. Uh, the other thing is that when you open a trial, it will have dummy data. So that's for testing. Uh, it will have some kind of products uh, so you can play around with them. But if you want to delete them, you would go to the administration, database backup, clean database. Uh, just show me the the easiest way is basically to go to sales. Um, yes. Yeah, so if you want to add everything one by one, then it will be sale. Uh, sorry, inventory, <laughs> products and services, and add new. Okay, and here is okay. And what about uh, uh, customers? Uh, again, go to the sales. Yes, yeah, sales customers awesome. add, add new. And what about uh, purchases? Purchasing. Uh, purchasing, so you have suppliers here again. Add new. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, this is the three things we we use it on a regular basis. So let me just uh, go through that, and uh, let me just uh, get myself uh, familiar with the product, and uh, I'll just uh, give you my feedback about that. All right. Thank you, and. Uh... I will email you in a few minutes with uh, the recording and with all of the additional information. And then uh, please don't hesitate to reach back anytime with the feedback or for any questions that you might have. Fantastic. You've been uh, uh, so uh, knowledgeable. Thanks so much. And I'll get back to you guys. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Uh, have a great day. And uh, yeah, uh, take care. All right. Thanks. See you, you too. Bye. Bye.